Welcome back to Let's Play No One Lives Forever, Burning Dog fans. You don't want to go in there. It's kind of a mess. Oh, I honestly wasn't expecting that one to work. Oh, sweet! I guess I found the Baron's office. I wonder if it's labeled. Or if those are just generic characters they grabbed off a menu or something. You know, you always hear the old wives' tales about, uh... What was it, like a... Lady who went on vacation to... China, liked uh, some of the beautiful calligraphy on a menu, so she... took a picture and then recreated it in a sweater or something. And then it turns out that those two symbols on her sweater say, Cheap and Tasty. Whoa. What am I doing? Right, hidden safe. Fuck. Not looking forward to this. Satisfying. Okay. The fuck, did you kill a mammoth? Who hunts badgers? No? Really? It stands out so much. Wait. That's just a very tiny uh, ashtray model. How odd. Okay. It's one of these pictures or something. No. No. Uh, hitting E doesn't do anything here. It doesn't make a noise to indicate that. Aha! Behind the fox. It is the craftiest one. Crack to save and photograph any relevant documents. Great. Leave it up to me, I guess. Why don't you switch to that? Uh. Nice. Should get that. You know what this looks like to me? This looks like, um. The corridor in Metal Gear Solid 1, where you meet the, uh, the cyborg ninja. Except it's not covered in blood. So far, so good. Oh, I hate this. It's down there. Oh, never mind, it's just glass. Oh, criminy! I'll just sidestep. Just one at a time. That's how I got past all the swinging blades in Resident Evil 4. Okay, maybe that's not an option here. Fuck me. Uh. 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 Okay. Saved. You're you're shitting me, right? No, oh, that's better. Wait. What if I just kill you? Surely this will have solved all my problems.
damn it. Like, am I really supposed to be able to get through this one? Well, let's see what happens if I just wing it. Ah! Instant death. Oh, it's cyanide lasers. I didn't realize it was... I thought it was instant death, so, uh... Huh. I didn't bring, like, the fire extinguisher to prevent burn damage or anything. Why are they cyanide lasers? Uh, oh. Damn it, damn it. Okay, this I don't understand. There's no... Shut up! Okay, so it is impossible to get through there. That's what, you know, the, the door is what threw me off there. More than really anything else. Do, 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 do. Come on, you know I have to look. There's gotta be intel or something back here. Wait. There's gonna be a grating back here, isn't there? No. There is no reason to backtrack all this way at all. Fair enough. I like that, though. The laser doesn't kill you instantly. That's kind of what threw me. I've, I've been... Oh, that's right. If you cross the laser, you, uh... It triggers, uh, the release of deadly gas. I'll just hold down C. Maybe my head is slipping through the floor or something. Crouch, crouch, crouch. Crouch, crouch, crouch. I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember seeing a movie with like a heist sequence like this. And there was a bit that really, really annoyed me. Where, uh, there's just nothing here except two pictures, a, uh, bit of intel, and, uh, this one document. Lazy. But, um, so it's not that surprising given who is the place we're in. Anyway, the idea was. In addition to all the usual laser and, you know, t uh, pressure-sensitive floors and nonsense like that, the room had a, uh, a sound detector. If you made any sound louder than about breathing out, then uh, it threatened to uh, give away your position. And, you know, of course, they're carrying these little, you know, sound detectors that... Uh, show how loud they're being on a little meter with a little red zone for if you get too loud and it really annoyed me don't give up on you says my lozenge because uh i get that one a lot lately i like that i mean it also says don't waste a precious moment but i'm gonna go with the other one. Oh no that was the other one i had today yeah never mind and the thing that really annoyed me about this is that the sound detector itself made a beeping sound that got louder as the me it got closer to the red zone, except it didn't set off its own meter. Anyway, invoice for three platypuses, I think it's platypi, eight ostriches, one rhinoceros, they spelled that wrong, five capybara, that I don't know the plural of, 19 wombats, and a pair of albino howler monkeys. Shoots a wombat. She just beams outside. Let's of get out of here. What's wrong? Volkov. Once again, I find myself aiming a pistol at someone you care about. Well, drop your gun. How do I know you won't shoot him? 
You don't. But you can be sure that I will shoot him. Unless you do as I say. Don't listen to him, Archer. I realize you are American, and therefore feel entitled to speak your mind whenever you please. But you are also at gunpoint, and very likely to be shot if you don't shut up! Go to hell. What did you say? Nothing. I heard you. Tell me what you said. I thought you wanted me to shut up. Now you want me to talk? Make up your damn mind. You are testing my patience. Miss Archer, I suggest you drop your weapon before your obnoxious American friend forces me to silence him. Once and for all. Don't do it! Get out of here, now! Tom! Go! Go! Where'd that shot come from? After her! I hope you are pleased. Serious question. He wasn't standing behind Goodman or anything. Why didn't she just shoot him? Man. I guess that explains why we never got that distraction. Yeah, right. A bittersweet success, to be sure, but a success nonetheless. Recovering from Agent Goodman's death will be no easy task, but you can be sure harm won't sit idly by while you grieve. The information you recovered from the headquarters of Dumas Industrial Enterprises may prove to be the break you've needed. Report to the war room for a full briefing. The usual. Agent Goodman's death is a terrible blow, no question about it. But although this mission was costly, it may well prove to have been worth the price. I wish I could believe that. You mustn't lose sight of our objectives. The sacrifice of any or all of us is a small price to pay to preserve the lives we will save if we are successful. Tom knew the risks. So did Bruno. So do you. Knowing the risks doesn't really prepare you for losing a partner. It certainly doesn't prepare you for losing two. Nothing can prepare you. The loss of an operative is never expected and is always tragic. But as horrible as it sounds, it's also inevitable. It's a dangerous job. Perhaps Mr. Smith is right. Perhaps I'm not up to the task. Rubbish. You've performed remarkably well under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I confess I was somewhat skeptical at first, but that was before I grasped the magnitude of the situation. In my entire tenure as a field operative, I never once faced a crisis this formidable, and certainly can't say I would have done so with the aplomb and competence you've demonstrated thus far. I didn't realize you were a field operative. Indeed, for 14 years. After the war, I found I was having a hard time adjusting to civilian life. Fortunately, an old acquaintance of mine was recruiting for Unity and happened to ring me one afternoon. I've never looked back. Sort of difficult to imagine, isn't it? Not at all. You flatter me. Anyhow, let's have no more self-pity. What do you say? Yes, sir. So before you served on the committee, you and Bruno were colleagues. And friends. Did you ever work together on an assignment? Frequently. We lost track of how many times we'd saved each other's lives. And you still believe he was capable of treason? In my heart? No. 
Intellectually, I don't quite know what to believe. No question about it. He was always a steadfast, resourceful fellow. But the history books are full of patriots turned traitors. There's no telling what a man is capable of, given the appropriate temptations. I know what I believe. I admire your conviction, and I pray you're right. Ah, Mr. Smith, I hope you have some good news. Good news would be that we hadn't lost another valuable agent on this mission. What news do we have? Well, our analysis of Agent Archer's photographs is complete. And? We have a possible lead on Dr. Schenker's whereabouts. I think we can classify that as good news. As I said, it's all relative. This harm situation isn't the only crisis in the world, and we're fast running out of competent field agents. Then suppose you get to the point and tell us what we know about Dr. Schenker so we can go fetch him. It's somewhat speculative at this point, but it's possible that Harm is keeping him at a secret underground research facility in North America. We don't know the exact location of this facility, but thanks to the files Archer photographed, we know it exists, apparently in the vicinity of a lumberyard in western Washington state. It seems the site is being supplied by an American Railways passenger train. Records and research has dug up evidence of various trains making unscheduled stops in the area over the past three weeks. At regular intervals? Indeed. Probably to drop off supplies and personnel. We're certain that at least one American Railways engineer is on the harm payroll, although several individuals may be involved. We're looking into it. What's my assignment? Phase one will be to apprehend the engineer or engineers in question so that we can interrogate them. Once you're aboard the train... How exactly am I to get aboard? We'll smuggle you into the galley car. Lovely. Anyhow... Once you're aboard, you will meet with a contact who will tell you precisely whom you'll need to detain. Mm -hmm. It is safe to presume that other harmed personnel will be aboard the train, so subtlety is advisable. Needless to say, seizing the conspirators will prevent the train from making its stop, so you'll have to be sure to detrain at the appropriate time. Well, after falling out of an airplane, I suppose jumping off a moving train can't be that bad. That won't be necessary. Once your objectives are complete, you must head for the caboose and detach it when you're near the lumberyard. We'll have an agent in place to switch the track and reroute you to an unused depot behind the lumberyard. This area is not likely to be heavily guarded, so you shouldn't have much difficulty getting through. If all goes according to plan, you will rendezvous with another undercover agent who will, we hope, have information that should help you locate the underground base. Then I grab Dr. Schenker and get the hell out. Precisely. We'll have a helicopter nearby awaiting your signal. Your flight departs in one hour, so if you need to stop by the toy shop, now's the time. Understood. Thank you for putting things in perspective for me, sir. I promise you I will do everything in my power to destroy harm. Archer? Sir? Don't let anger cloud your judgment. Revenge is an understandable impulse, but it is also a contemptible one. Our job is not to avenge, but to protect... I can't just shut off my feelings like a tap. No, but you can bridle them and use them to fuel your resolve. Destroy harm, but do it to save innocent lives, not to retaliate for those already lost. The moment you give in to wrath, you become as reprehensible as the monsters were hunting. Clearly, we are all called upon to take lives from time to time, but we must neither relish it nor agonize over it. It is a duty, plain and simple, not a pleasant one but often a necessary one. I'll do my best, sir. I have absolute confidence that you will. There was one more thing, although I'm not sure how important it is. According to one of the documents Archer photographed, it seems the Baron's wife changed her surname some time ago. Really? So her maiden name isn't McLean? It's Farnsworth. Felicity Farnsworth? Are you quite sure? Positive. Do you know of her? Aye, that I do. When she was eight years old, her father, a wealthy banker, was involved in a nasty public scandal involving unmentionable acts with a twelve-year-old boy. How dreadful. Mr. Farnsworth committed suicide shortly thereafter. Felicity and her mother, by all accounts of vapid socialite, were ruthlessly ostracized by their peers. Guilt by association, presumably. Furthermore, rather than inheriting the fortune she expected, Mrs. Farnsworth discovered that her late husband had left the family in inescapable debt. She went quite mad. 
Several days after being institutionalized, she hung herself. Hanged. My word, that poor child. Felicity fell into the custody of an elderly aunt whose lifestyle was apparently rather more severe than she was accustomed to. About a year later, the aunt took a fatal tumble down the stairs. Foul play? No mention was ever made. What happened to the girl? She ended up with a foster family where she remained until she was fourteen. One night she went out her bedroom window and was never seen again. Or at least no one recognized her. Astonishing. Where did you learn so much about her? I studied her. Come again? I believe I first read about her in a gossip column. I was intrigued by the similarities in our background, so I dug deeper. What similarities? Well, we both came from wealthy families. We were both orphaned at a relatively early age. Our fathers both killed themselves, although for very different reasons. We were both plunged into undesirable circumstances and resorted to rather desperate measures to survive. I found it quite uncanny at the time, although in retrospect I think we had less in common than I once believed. Adversity is the truest test of character. The strong are strengthened by it, the weak made weaker. It sounds like this baroness didn't have the wherewithal to cope with her misfortunes. It's a common trend among terrorists and bullies that they imagine themselves persecuted by fate and therefore feel justified in harming others. You're frothing. Sorry, I get carried away. She's involved somehow. The Baroness? Upon what unimpeachable evidence are you basing that supposition? I just have a feeling. Ah, then the case is as good as closed. I don't expect you to believe me, but I'll count on you to say something smug if I'm right. It's virtually guaranteed. I'm not smug. Acerbic, perhaps, maybe even sardonic, but not smug. Okay, sure. Oh, Whatever you need to tell yourself. I have to agree with her, Smith. Don't either of you have work to do? Aye, sir. Off I go. Good luck. That was a long one. Welcome to Advanced Field Tactics. In fact, there's the timer. Well, I guess uh, we know the drill then. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you in the next episode of Let's Play No One Lives Forever when we find out what new and silly toys they have for us this time. Later!